investigative journalist Jan Wong, our guest. She is also a teacher and an author of five books. She'll be speaking uh, tomorrow night at the UBC Main Library, 5 to 6, and she will be lunching, it looks like, noon to 2 on Saturday, May 26th at the Kagawa House? Yes. Okay. And it will be about out of the blue, her, her uh, journey so far with workplace depression. Uh, I understand why you would have a difficult day when, the, when Parliament denounces you for what you wrote, right? The That's Prime right. Minister of the country mm, yeah. says... He wrote a letter to the Globe and we published it. Good. <laughs> uh, it's embarrassing. No, it's not that embarrassing. No. It's all right. I mean, journalists can handle that. But who else? Uh, Charest, uh, Charest wrote a wrote a letter, we published it. Saying like what? You're totally wrong. Yeah, totally this is wrong. not how Idiotic. Quebec people are. Right. This is not what we believe. We mm -hmm. embrace ethnics. Right. I'm totally wrong, which is why I got all that hate mail. And right? how do you feel you are now? Were you wrong? No, I don't think I was wrong. So you would do it again? Somebody yeah, allowing it? but it's it. my opinion, and you don't have to agree. Mm -hmm. But I am a third-generation Montrealer. I was born and raised in Montreal. My family's still there. I wrote from what I saw mm -hmm. in my own experience. Did you think some of this depression was about the tough things you do deal with when you see the seedy side of life and the murder and the mayhem and the senseless killings and at some point, especially when you work in a tough newsroom, mm -hmm. it's just all too much? I think that journalism is a particularly stressful job, but I had been a journalist for 30 years and this was the first time. I think what, for me, the problem was the betrayal. I couldn't understand why my company wouldn't call the police. I couldn't understand why they would stop my sick pay. It all became a answers, questions without answers. And when you don't understand why something's happening, I think it mm -hmm. contributes to your sure. stress. Yeah, and I know the Canadian Association of Journalists will often defend somebody if, they, if they're in a tough position. Somebody Our, overseas, usually. Yes. Not somebody in their own backyard. I think this is a problem with Canadian organizations. Okay. Because... Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to offend the Globe and Mail. Well, I know my friend Stevie Cameron uh, went through some rough patches she when did. she wrote the Airbus book right. and uh, took a shot at Brian Mulroney and all of that stuff, and she had some very difficult times. And the Globe and Mail uh, printed a front-page story about her, uh, alleging she was an RCMP informant. Mm -hmm. And she almost went broke trying to defend herself, and I spearheaded a movement among the journalists to raise money for Stevie and Stevie is convinced that that's why the Globe and Mail had it in for me. I don't know why because I was right. a, I was an asset. I mean readers like mm -hmm. to read me well, I think and they, they turn me into a liability. They, somebody should, new, new publisher, new editor should bring back lunch well, with Jan Wong because we have real housewives and, and your lunch columns were so juicy. It would it would be a lot of fun to do that again. It would be lunch with uh, Conrad Black. Yeah, or lunch with Fanny Kiefer. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I don't know how exciting I am, but I know he would have an interesting story to tell you. Yeah, he would okay, be great. Okay, back to the doctor's okay. office. When you first went to your doctor, I, I read, you said, that it can't be depression. Yeah. I, I'm not the type. I'm tough. How could I be depressed? But what I learned is, doesn't matter whether you're tough or weak or... Um, it doesn't matter. It's like getting the flu. Anybody can get the flu and anybody can get mm -hmm. depression. It just depends if you've got enough events to push you over. Sometimes you can get depression from having major surgery and being under an anesthetic. Mm -hmm. You can get major depression after a happy event because it's all the chemicals in your brain. That's it's interesting. It's the imbalance. So you can mm -hmm. have a picture-perfect wedding and on your honeymoon you can be depressed and you'll feel really bad because you don't know why you should feel bad. You should be elated, but you're not right. in that. It happens to pro athletes at the top of the chain, yes. and they're no That's longer right. playing for the Chicago Blackhawks right. or something. They don't know who they are. Right. Well, without, well, they know who they are, but they're no longer the hockey hero. That's right. They, they, well, we see it all the time, but we don't hear about it from employees because when they leave, they generally aren't allowed to speak about it. Mm -hmm. But when my doctor told me, she told me very early on, I just cried even harder. And I said, no, it can't be. I can't be depressed. And it took me a long time. Even after I started to see the psychiatrist, that was in my relapse period, because I figured, well, if their psychiatrist says I should see a psychiatrist, I better see one. Even then, I wouldn't go on antidepressants for quite a few months. Wouldn't go on. I was too afraid. I understand. I, I thought it was, mm -hmm. would affect my brain, and I thought it would be permanent, or I thought I'd be addicted. None of that's true. So you tried they everything help. else, uh, uh, leaving town, going to yeah. Paris, doing yeah. what? 
Well, travel, it turns out, is really good when you're depressed. It's, and I trace it in my book, I talk about the fight or flight syndrome. And I think now it's literally we take flights. Right. I think because you have to get away from the stressor. Mm -hmm. And in my case, it was the Globe and Mail and those boxes were on every street corner. Right. I really couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't look at it. I understand. But if you're clinically depressed, as you know so well, because you have been there, uh, it doesn't matter where you go. No, it, really. it, it, it helps comes a little with you bit. in your luggage. It doesn't matter if you buy all new outfits every day. Yeah. It's a quick hit and then it goes away. Right. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't really help, but you get a little bit better. I could eat when I was away. Mm -hmm. I couldn't eat when I was at home. And you're right about the shopping. I have another chapter on shopping, really? too. Right. Because there's dopamine being squirted in your brain every time mm -hmm. you spend money. And so you look for that. That's why I think depressed people shop all the time. It's, it's a quick high. Yes. You get the hit, you get the high, right. you get home, you think, right. why did I buy that? And then you get really depressed when you get your visa bill. Uh, that too. Yeah. That too. Uh, drugs, you took drugs, yes. you, you found, uh, did they have trouble finding balance for you? Yes, I, I took four different ones. They start you on one, they have no idea. And it takes four to six weeks. If it doesn't work, they start weaning you off it and they start the new one right away. So then you're on two. Right. That doesn't work, they wean you off it, then they start the third one. It was the fourth one that seemed to work for me. Mm -hmm. Well, Buchan, but I don't know if it really did because by then I figured I have to leave the Globe and Mail. Did, I have to. I have to get out of there. Right, but did you try um, alternative options, uh, acupuncture? Do you know what I mean when you get yeah, any when you have any no. illness? You think I've got to try anything. No, I You're didn't. You're so depressed you can't try it. Maybe. Yeah, I, I only went to see my psychiatrist every week, mm -hmm. and um, I cried every week for, I don't know, more than a year, and um, I don't know how he could stand it. I don't understand how psychiatrists can stand doing their job. I understand, but what about your family? Oh, and my family, were they were wonderful. My two boys were teenagers then, 13 and 16, and they just instinctively stepped up to the plate. And my mm -hmm. husband just held us all together. It was all by instinct because we didn't know about depression mm -hmm. either. And um, the boys didn't really have their rebellion at all because they were just doing everything. You know, they would go for walks with me. There mm -hmm. are no teenage boys who go for walks no, with their mothers. not many. But yeah. your boys had been with you when you were pretending to be a domestic yeah, goddess, they... as I recall. <laughs> so they knew that eventually, maybe, maybe they didn't know. They were probably afraid you wouldn't come out of this. Yeah. Uh, what they cried a lot too. Isn't. They cried, and it, I was so angry all the time with them. I tried to throw my son's laptop out the window one night, and my other son sort of grabbed me in a bear hug so I couldn't throw mm. the laptop because I was just like angry. mom's cracking up. Pretty mom's much is what they up. probably She's thought. She's lost her identity. I was so identified with work that when mm. I didn't have my work and I couldn't write and I was getting fired, I mean, right. I just was so lost. Okay. I, I didn't know what to do. And now you do. So what was the lesson? The you're not your job. You're not your what job. What was the lesson? The lesson is get ready because you're probably going to have a, a spell of depression. The chances are really high. And think about work as work, but always have your family. Always mm -hmm. have your friends and think of outside interests. What saved me a lot was my music. I play flute, high school band level. But it right. saved me. I started playing in all these different groups. You have to do more than just go to the yes. office. I was addicted to my byline, and okay. I, I'm not anymore. Well, I can't imagine if you didn't have a job, and you didn't have a family, and you were clinically depressed, how terrible that would be. And that's why I wrote the book. I want people to know about the symptoms. I want people to know there's suicide mm -hmm. ideation, but that it's common. It's normal, and when this passes, you won't feel like killing yourself. So don't kill yourself. Did you feel yeah. like it? Yeah. You did, eh? I, but it's common. Uh -huh. you, it sounds kind of dramatic, mm -hmm. but it's completely typical mm -hmm. symptom. And now you're but teaching, I, you're in where? Nova Scotia? Fredericton. Uh, Fredericton, New Brunswick. St. Thomas University, uh, the only liberal arts university in Canada, and I teach journalism to undergrads. Okay, and tell them to ask the tough questions. I do. I bet you do. I do. I bet you do. Are they really nice how, today in they're, journal, they're, journalism school? They're so nice in New Brunswick, but I have mm -hmm. to teach them how to be tough. How to file those Freedom of Information requests. We filed 100 last term. Okay. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.